Hi, this is section 6.1, and we're dealing with slope fields. Slope fields are mathematical representations of possibly different slopes that occur in the world. So here's one example that I do have here, and this is uh, magnetism. So we have some iron shavings, and then the magnet here has a force field that it projects out. And so how does it react? Well, it reacts by making these shavings all go in a certain direction. Now what I can do is I can find a particular point here and I can find the slope of what's going on at that particular point and see what the waves of this magnetic field are doing. That's kind of the idea of the slope fields. Now where else do we have slope fields? Well you might have currents. They show up on waves or I'm sorry uh, uh, currents in the ocean and also air currents over a country or over an area, or even air pl airplane dynamics. You know, they put the cars and airplanes in wind tunnels just to see how they react. They put smoke out there, and then you can see kind of how the wind is behaving in certain areas. There's another cool one that I found, too. This isn't metal shavings, but it's a liquid, they call liquid iron, that reacts to the magnets as well. So the slope field is generated by the slopes from a differential equation. So we're finding we have a derivative. The derivative tells us how a curve is behaving in a certain round of area. And so that's what the slope field does. And in calculus, we have all these equations that represent these slope fields. But if you take the air patterns over the United States and look at those vector fields, which they call them in, or in, in physics, they're not going to respond to an equation. So most of these things you can't use an equation for, but what we have in mathematics is equations to represent these and then you get a better feel for them. So let's look at the first example here. Find the slopes given by the differential equation, negative x over y at the following points. So all we do is we take 3, 2, if we're doing part A, and plug it in to my differential equation. So if I do the differential equation evaluated at 3, 2, I'm just going to get negative 3 over 2. Make sure that the x's and y's, you don't get those mixed up. That's what happens sometimes. Why don't you try b, c, and d and see what you get. Pause this. So what we're going to do is take all of these slopes that we did find, and we're going to put them on a coordinate plane. Now, some things you should realize, though, is that slope equal to 0, you're going to draw a horizontal line like this. Slope of 1 is going to be at a 45 degree angle, like so. 1 half would be less than that, and 2 would be greater than that. So you got to put everything in perspective as you go. I also can have uh, negative slopes. So if I have m is equal to negative 1, that would be at a 45 going down. This one would be less than that. And then this one, that should be a 2. Doesn't look like a 2. And that should be like that. So when you draw these, that's the kind of perspective that you're doing. So if I look at my first one here, at the point 3, 2, I get a slope of negative 3 halves. So let's go 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2. That would be a slope of negative 1 and a half. That's what that looks like. If I go to part B, negative 1, and then 3, this is a slope of 1 third. That looks about right. It's up to the right. This one is a slope of 2 at negative 2, negative 1. So here, that looks about like a slope of 2. No, it doesn't. That's because I made a mistake here. So that should be a negative 2. And then D, if I plug in uh, 2, negative 2, go to 2, and then negative 2, I'm going to plot a slope of 1. Now, if you notice, there's some patterns going on around here. I don't have lines here, but I am undefined at y equal to 0, so I can put in vertical tangents. Now, I did skip over the origin, and why I skipped over the origin is because we have 0 over 0. That's nothing that we're dealing with, so there should be nothing at the origin that you're going to be putting. However, at 0 over, for instance, 1, if I have 0 over 1, that's undefined. And so, in fact, up here I should have undefined, which would be a vertical 
tangent line at that point. So 0 over 1 will give me that one right there. So make the segments long enough so I can see the slopes, but don't make them too long that they're running into each other. So why can't we find slopes when y equal to 0? Well, we just said that. If it's 0 over 0, don't draw anything. If it's 0 over a value, then you can do a vertical segment, because that's what the slope would be. So they want us to fill in the rest of these. I'll do some of them. We know that when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to something else, I'm going to get a 0. So everything that's on the y-axis here, I'm going to get a horizontal tangent line at each one of those points. Remember, 0, 0, I don't do anything. And then here, I'm going to have a slope of 1, looks like. And then here, I'm going to have a slope of 2, and then a slope of 3, if I'm doing that right. So continue these on and see if you can figure out what the other ones will represent, the missing points, in other words. So there's my finished product. Notice on the diagonals here, you have a slope of either 1 or negative 1. So you can zip those across. There's lots of little patterns in these things. Sometimes they replicate themselves a lot, sometimes not so much. But you can look for patterns and see if you can figure out the rest of them by that. Usually we won't have you fill out a slope field that's this big, but that's what we have. So now, under example 3, we want to start at a point. So what I like to say is that, for instance, if I have this slope field here, I might have a situation where I drop my hat in the water, so to speak. So if this is, the slope field represents uh, water currents. Maybe I, for instance, drop my hat in the water at 0, 1. If I do that, then I kind of want to follow the pattern of the curve to figure out where I'm going to flow to after this. Okay, so if I draw this, this thing is going to come, and it, it, you can kind of see that this stuff is like a circle. So I'm kind of coming here, and if I drop my hat in the water, I go towards this side, and then it's going to go down, like so. Now I do have to say something, that these slopes at y equal to 0, you have to talk to your teacher and see how they want you to deal with it. Maybe your teacher doesn't want you to draw those vertical segments. I think this textbook is telling us that with this statement right here. However, some other people might have you do that. So I, I'm not clear on that right now, but that's what we're doing. Also, here we want to do an open interval. So we do want to stop here. So this should be an open circle here and here. And so that would be your solution if you dropped your hat in the water at 0, 1. Now here's another point. What if I drop my hat in the water at negative 1, 1? That would be right here. So I'm going to come here, and this is going to just curve around. I don't have to go right through these points, but this is what I'm going to end up with. I'm going to have an open circle on each one of those end points. And then the last one, 0, negative 3. If I do that one, 0, negative 3 would be down here. And if I draw, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to end up right here, open circle. Now notice when I'm below, I stay below. And when I'm above, I stay above. Why is that? Well, look at this. Don't do too much. But if we do solve for y, that means that we do want a function. So if I continued this circle thing all the way around, I wouldn't have a function. So let's, let's solve for this particular solution and see what happens. So let's try this example 4 and see what happens. So I have dy dx, uh, if I separate the variables I'm going to bring the y over, is equal to negative x dx. Then I integrate both sides, and I'm going to get y squared over 2 is equal to negative x squared over 2 plus c. Now I can change this c by multiplying everything through by 2, so y squared is equal to negative x squared plus that c. Now what happens is that we want to solve for y. In instructions, a lot of times, they'll ask for the solution y equals f of x. That means solve for y. And when we do this, we're looking for a function. That's some of the discussion I just had previously. So if I do this, this is y is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative x squared plus c2. So one of the solutions would be square root negative x squared plus c2, or I could have the opposite of that, like that. 
So I'm going to end up with two different uh, possible general solutions for this thing. Now we go to the particular solution. If I plug in the point zero 0.01, what's going to happen? Well, I have the plus or minus situation here. Well, what is my y coordinate here? Well, it's a positive. Am I going to get a positive yielding from this equation or this equation? Well, I hope you understand that it's going to be this equation because it's got the positive on front. So that's the one that I have to use. So I have the positive square root, plug in the values that I know, and solve for C2. I didn't plug that in, so that's a zero. And so if I solve this, I get C2 is equal to one. So this is my particular solution. Let's look at this example here. I'm rolling through the point, zero, negative three. So which one am I gonna be using? This one or this one? Well, the negative three tells me that I need to yield a negative three for my y coordinate, so it has to be that equation. So I have this equation here, and so I plug in the zero, negative three, and you get this equation here. I lost a lot of these negatives, I'm sorry, these squareds, and so make sure you put those back in if you missed those before. Should be negative x squared under the square root symbol. I missed that in a few places. Make sure you get that in. And here, I need to yield the negative 3, so I need the negative there. So that was the whole point of that problem. So the y coordinate tells you, are you on the upper half of the graph or the negative tells me I'm on the lower half of the graph. So this would be the pictures of what you would end up with for each one of these solutions. So since I wanted a function, I only wanted half of the circle, the semicircle, uh, either top or bottom. So I hope that kind of clarifies what I was talking about before. Example number five. Differential equation, y prime is all in terms of y. So if I want to draw all these, notice that when I have y equal to 3, what happens? Well, my slope's always going to be 1 third, regardless of what the x is. So when I go up here to y equal to 3, I'm going to get 1 third going all the way across. And if I go here, where y is equal to 2, I'm going to get 1 half all the way across. And then at 1, I'm going to get a 1. This is a few too many lines for me to do a good job, sorry. But this is what it's going to look like. Then you can finish that up. So I finish up that bottom. Now if you look at what they asked me to do. Graph the particular solution. So for instance, if I go start and drop my hat in the water at negative 2, negative 1, I'd be right here. Now notice I have this kind of separation point again. Probably going to run into trouble there, so I'm going to make sure that when I go this way, I'm going to have the open segment there. And then when I go this way, I'm going to end up like this. Something like that. This is flattened off too much, sorry. Drawing on this pad isn't the greatest, but I'm trying. And then 2, 2 would be the other one that I want. So 2, 2, I go to this point here, and it's a very similar type thing. Looks like I go like this. So it's going to be a sideways parabola. So maybe when I solve this thing, which it says right here, that I'm going to end up with. So dy dx, bring the y over, can bring the x over, is 1 dx. So I integrate both sides, y squared, divided by 2, is equal to x plus c. So I can multiply both sides by 2. 2x plus, well, now I got a different c. And so then I take the square root, so y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2x plus c1. Now when we look at these points, what's the y coordinate here? Well, it's negative. So this one is going to be y equals, and now I'm finding the particular solution, if you can read that. y is equal to negative square root of 2x plus c. That's the one I want to select for this. So I have the negative 1 is equal to negative. So I just finished both of these up for you. Double check them. I hope that you're running through this and pausing and trying these. But I get y equals negative square root of 2x plus 5 because I have the negative y value. And then over here in the blue, 
I have y equals square root of 2x because I have the positive y. That's how it works. For example, 6 and 7 are very good because what will be done to you is that sometimes they'll give you the differential equation and sometimes they'll give you the equation that satisfies this slope field. So if you look at example number 6, they are giving you the differential equation. So that would be what's generating the slope of all these little line segments. So when I look over here, well, there's a couple ways to do this. If I did try to draw a solution, this looks kind of like a cubic. So possibly what I'm looking at is something with a squared value in it. And it is all the same top to bottom. So this going top to bottom is all the same no matter where we're at. So that means that I'm going to be exclusively in terms of x. So if I look at this, I can exclude anything in y because y would be going all across the same. And so what else do I got? I can exclude that. This one is x and y, so I can exclude that. So it's either going to be this one or this one. Well, I'm going to say it's going to be this one because my solution would be a cubic. So that means that my differential equation should be a quadratic. All right, so this is not the equation of this curve that I just drew, but it is for each one of those slopes. You can also go through and check a little point here, negative 1, 1, and you got a positive slope. Everything comes out positive, so then we do have that there. Then example 7, they give you the solution. So I want to know what the solution would be. So it's one of these functions here. So that's what I would be drawing. So if I dropped my hat in the water on these, look at what happens. What does that look like? Well, that looks like a, an exponential decay equation. So I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to have this. Now, if it keeps on rising, looks like it flattens out quite good. If it slowly went down, then maybe I'd be looking at ln x or negative ln x. But in this case, it looks like it really flattens off. And so it's going to be exponential decay, which would be y equals e to the negative x. This is the solution. So I graph this thing. That's what I'm looking for right now. All right. And just for reference, this is y equal to negative ln x. It would have a vertical asymptote, and then it would slowly still creep down. This one really looks like it flattens off, so i got to believe that's exponential. So on your TI Inspire, you can go and graph these things using the graph entry. So go to the graph mode, graph entry, differential equations. Unfortunately, I only know how to do this in terms of x. There's programs, applets on the, on the computer that you can go to that will do x and y, but that's all we have for this. Then if we go beyond that, y prime will show up. So with y prime, you just type in what the differential equation is. And then you'll get something like you have down here. This is the graph of dy dx is equal to sine of x. But now if I graph this, like if I drop my hat in the water and I wanted the solution curve, notice what the solution curve is. It's not sine of x that I'm drawing there. This is y equals negative cosine of x plus some constant. This is the drawing, is the differential equation. I'm, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Is the solution. And then this is the differential equation that we do have. Now, I also can put in a point here. So if I put in 1, 0, I would go to 1, 0, and it would graph the solution curve for me at 1, 0. Here's an example where I plugged in the point 2, negative 1, which is right there, and then it gives me the solution. So play around with that. Try that. It's kind of fun.